All right. So what we see here is uh, we're going to learn what is instructional leadership and supervision, and how do we go about you no know, being an instructional leader and supervisor. So if you're a principal, you no know, having this school head role, the IC role, it's very important that you know what it means to be an instructional leader and supervisor. So our terminal objective here is to improve the school head competencies on instructional leadership and supervision uh, that is what we wanted to achieve and then we wanted to uh, in order for us to achieve this we need to define uh, instructional leadership and supervision uh, we need to state the duties and responsibilities of of the school heads as an instructional supervisor we need to practice the standards and uh, approaches in instructional supervision Okay, so apply the principles of instructional supervision. And we will be talking about situations wherein we'll be applying all this, um, these principles that we are talking here. Welcome, lifelong learners. Welcome to my channel, Learning with Doc Labs, where we learn about research, education, technology, and the law. I am Doc Lebs. I am an educational leader, researcher, and law enthusiast. If you wish to grow as an educator, leader, researcher, and as a person, this channel is for you. Start your journey of lifelong learning by clicking subscribe or if you like exclusive videos of my trainings and webinars in the international and national arena, click join for more specialized content. Remember, learning is fun and making it lifelong is key to a fulfilling life. Start now by clicking subscribe or join. So let's ask this question. Who are you? No, Describe who you are as an instructional supervisor or leader. So what kind of leadership do you have? No, uh, Allow me to share first. No, <laughs> Because I'm the one talking. But uh, you, you also try to relate with it with this one. No, I'm, 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 I'm the type of leader who usually wants to to be of service to my people. No, I wanted to go ahead of them because I want to teach them. Definitely because when I was a student, I really loved teaching. And uh, teaching is something for me I will not, I will never let go of it. Because for me, when you are a, once you are a teacher, you are always a teacher. So even if I am already a school head, I love teaching my my fellow teachers. You no, know, and I am an advocate of learning. So um, I always try to convince them you know, as much as possible. I I try to be an inspiration to them, and at the same time, what I do is. Uh, at the same time, I try to guide them to become the best version of themselves. I encourage them to go to school. And maybe sometimes it's not that uh, that immediate. The effect is not immediate. But I believe in the principle of planting seeds. So when you plant seeds, you allow your, your, your concept to be conceived in their minds. And later on, I tell you, most of my teachers really finished their doctorate and masteral degree. How about you? Who are you as an instructional leader? No, and as a supervisor, what do you usually do? No, what is your style of your leadership? Okay, and you know, teachers sometimes they don't really. Uh, it's not immediate. You're dealing with adults already. They are above eighteen years old. No, especially if you're younger than them. No, uh, it's very important that you have that strength. You no, know, to convince that person. So you need to be very convincing at the same time. So how do you deal with that? Uh, what is your system as a school head? So you need to answer that for yourself. But we need to understand how we go about doing supervision and leadership. Now, being a supervisor is different from lead, being a leader. You know, take note of that. When you are a supervisor, you look at, it's, it's a form of management. You, know? uh, you look at how to manage performance in order to get the results that you want. But when you say you are a leader, you are a person of influence. The, the the thought alone that you are there you no know, you have you have the power to make that change by just mere influence and that's very hard to cultivate you know? uh, usually leadership or the aura of being capable of transforming people comes out from experience you now if and reputation 
take note of that, ha? You, if you are already known about a lot of things, then you tend to increase that aura, no? That that power that you have to implement that change. Uh, that happened to me, no? When the first time that I I became a school head, uh, maybe perhaps in terms of leadership, I still need to develop it. But I'm a person who loves to learn, so that's why I studied management very well. In fact, my dissertation which was awarded best dissertation no, when I graduated in CNU. No, among all the doctorate students there, uh, there were many who graduated with me. Well, most of them were from higher ed, but I was lucky to really receive the award. Um, it's all about optimizing the performance. No? And it talks about how do you manage the performance of, of the teachers. I talk about strategic controls wherein you make sure yeah, you don't really need to be angry in order for you to get the results that you want. You just have to restructure the environment for you to get the results that you like. And I want to be calm on things, but I want to be very organized on how, you, how I do things. Okay, But leadership, as I mentioned, uh, the more you build your reputation as a good leader, as an intelligent leader, then you'll be forming no, that so-called aura of influence to other people. Now, important, no? <laughs> when it comes to power, uh, that is actually a test of your character. There is a famous saying no, telling us that if you wanted to test, if you wanted to test the character of that person, you just have to give him power. Because true power also shows your true color. Now, when you're given power, that's when your true color comes out. Okay? So what are you when you are given power? With great power also comes great responsibility. We heard that from Spider-Man. Right? <laughs> if you use it to help other people, no? So it's very important that you also understand that concept. Okay? When we are given that sphere of influence, how do we deal with that? So basically, no, in instructional leadership, you want we want to create good instructional leaders basically because we wanted to create good teachers. We also want to create good students. When we create good teachers, we create the so-called good students. So what is instructional supervision? It's a professional, continuous, and cooperative process for the improvement of instruction. No, you wanted instruction to improve, and it is continuous and cooperative. No, you are the person who will mentor that a particular person to keep on evolving to become a better teacher. Now, the problem with our system sometimes is the principal will just say, oh, that he is a good, that, uh, that person is a good teacher. But the basis is because he keeps on helping me in my work to the point that he doesn't go to his class anymore. <laughs> so that's the problem there. No, If you are saying that he is a good teacher, it's not all about helping you in your work. Uh, there are work that should be exclusively done by the principal, no? And there are things that you can delegate with your teachers, but they should not, no, miss their opportunity to do their real and primal work, which is teaching, no? You should be teaching them how to teach. Uh, that was the kind of leader I was when I was a principal. I, I was very, very particular with them attending their class. So remember that six hour engagement for teachers i only no i only want them to be in their classroom during the 6 hours the rest of the 2 hours they can use it for preparation but i tell you the schedule sometimes it's not purely 6 hours no there are times that there's a 1 hour for them to 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 spare because some subjects are only 2 hours when uh, before the pandemic so what i did i organized a, a monitoring of their schedule that every time they they are at that point no, that they're scheduled. They need to report to me to help me with the school operations. So that is a, a form of strategic control. No? You make sure that you maximize the people that are there for you. Ma, oftentimes, school heads, no, especially if they're new, mag-ikog-ikog na, maikog nga, manawag. But I tell you, no, if you are just in the right place, you can justify, um, you know, uh, maximizing the human resources that you have you no know, you don't have you don't have to be uh, reluctant to really call upon them but some of our school heads also is the exact opposite no they tend to abuse the teachers time and they are not sensitive even going beyond the office hours so 
it's it's a management style perhaps or whatever it is but um i'm talking for myself no um i i don't want to go beyond five o'clock always i uh, always make sure that we don't go beyond that okay so what is instructional supervision it is characterized by guidance assistance and sharing of ideas facilitation or orient uh, creation to help teachers improve learning situation and quality of learning in schools this is the major role of school heads no they we want to provide guidance assistance sharing of ideas and we want to facilitate the creation uh, of this uh, mechanism to help teachers improve their learning situation and i tell you i always tell my teachers this one if you are fulfilling at your job you feel like you are doing great then you will feel happy okay uh, it always feels good to do the right thing okay so that's where I tell them I am here to hold your hand you no know, for for a professional uh, colleague by a supervisor or an instructional leader who possess superior knowledge and skills who works coll collaboratively in school environment that nurtures the development of professional learning community now this is a very heavy word that we see here you should possess superior knowledge and skills <laughs> so this is where the challenge comes in no we need to be, you need to be someone considered to possess high, no, high superior knowledge and skills. And you can only do that through practice. So uh, the reason why you are here, no, sharing, hearing from those who are successful in this field and um, learning from their craft is because in order to become one, you need to pretend as if you are already one. No? And you need to practice what we do. So try to listen to uh, the, the, how Sir Jen studies, uh, how I do my leadership style, because managers have their experience. And you try to, uh, it all starts with imitating it at first. And then later on, you know, look for mentors that you can uh, hear from uh, and get guidance from, you know, from your own assistant schools division superintendent or your superintendent or whoever is, it is that, you can, that can guide you. And try to become a better person in order for you to to do this. You cannot do instructional supervision if you cannot, uh, if you are not considered superior in terms of knowledge and skills. Okay, so you can always do that by studying. No. So instructional leadership involves setting clear goals. So this is our goal: managing the curriculum, monitoring lesson plans, allocating resources. Do you check lesson plans? Evaluating teachers regularly and promote student learning and growth. So that is a very important task. So comprises the so those are instructional leadership, no? It also com, uh, comprises the following tasks: defining the purpose of schooling, set, uh, setting school-wide goals, providing resources needed for learning to occur, supervising and evaluating teachers, coordinating staff development programs, creating collegial relationship with and among teachers so i've also experienced this one especially the new teachers i want them to have a a buddy i call it a buddy system right so the buddy system especially the new teachers when they come there is onboarding so in onboarding that teacher will be the one guiding them in terms of what are the rules and regulations within the school what are our internal rules that we follow uh, what are the things that i'm very concerned about uh, about being engaged uh, what happens if the the bell rings what happens if there's a disaster? I always uh, do that. So you are promoting this collegial relationship among, uh, among your teachers, right? So four instructional leadership skills of a school. Ed. First is effective use of resources. Remember, um, that's why you need to maximize and look at the resources that you have. Because in Dep Ed, we know that there's a perpetual lack of resources that is happening. Even if we are given a uh, big budget still, no, we are we are challenged in terms of the effective use of resources. There are also problems with communication skills, no? So you need to be uh you need to be you need to be very uh adept with this one. Communication skills. No? Uh, a school leader should be able to communicate with uh, the, the people, with his or her teachers. So as a school leader, you should practice talking. No? You should practice being capable of communicating your point well. And at least not a boring type of person when you talk. No? Then serving as an instructional resource. <laughs> That's why I'm really encouraging the leaders to really read. No? You can only become uh, a person who is a source of knowledge if you start reading. 
No? So that's one part here. You are very knowledgeable with the dip and orders. If you notice me talking, um, I'm I'm very particular with dip and orders, dip and memorandums. If possible, I try to memorize their uh, their numbers, but I, I cannot memorize really everything. But at least uh, the, the most basic one, like our Republic Act 9155, Republic Act 10533, Dep. Order 2 Series of 2015, and other regulations that are important no, in, in helping our teachers um, become better no, and uh, the different strategies in teaching, continue reading about that. No, you, you need to be an instructional resource. And most importantly, being visible and accessible. No? As sadly, there are school heads who are <laughs> almost invisible. We call them jungle because they are nowhere to be found. No? And I tell you, in our division, even I know because I'm still at OIC level, um, I've just passed my career executive service eligibility and it so happened, no, I, can, I will already be given an assistant schools division superintendent uh, item already because I'm already qualified. I just finished my saldiwa. Um, but still, no, but still uh, at OIC level because of the election ban. No, but but still, I will tell you, I still do my time in. The third level officials are the only ones, no, let me take note of that, are the only ones exempted of using the biometrics and the daily time record. No, they are the only ones exempted. You know why? Because they are, we are directly appointed by the president. We are even exempted to wear the uniform. Pero right now, even if I'm in this position, I still, uh, I still do the time in, log in, log out for the sake of transparency. Okay. And every time I miss, no, I, I, I need to travel from Naga to Danao City. That's 70 kilometers away. And plus, I need to travel in between city uh the Cebu city which is the heart of Cebu no this uh, an, an area which is really uh which has a lot of traffic no so i need around 2 hours to 2 hours to 3 hours to travel no from naga to to danao but even if i'm late no i i have that deducted from my leave credits no there are always deductions in my part but i don't i don't really count that no uh, no matter what happens, as long as we do things the right way, you know, God will always bless us. You know? And uh, I even spend you know, beyond 5 p.m. I usually go at home at around 8 or 9 p.m. And sometimes I may be late in coming, you know, but my late is only around 5 minutes, so that's 8.05. But I have that deducted. You know? But sad to say, there are school heads that are acting like they are ready superintendents and assistant superintendents. <laughs> Okay, so uh, they they are exempted from the time in, so that's not good. But what's worse than that? There are teachers who are acting already that they are exempted with the time in. <laughs> so, uh, you know, don't forget, you no, know, the the only exemption are the third level officials, you no, know, and that will only apply if they are already given item, you no. Know. But there's that's actually silent. There are still other assistant superintendents like me who are at OIC level who are exempted. No? So just to be safe, I, I do the time in. I ask them to deduct this to my uh, to to ensure that we are all fair on this. When I was the school head also, I also do that. If it's deduction, then it's deduction on my part. I I show them uh, we are all, you no, know, we are all. Uh, accountable to this because I am as the principal here I am not exempted with the DTR only the uh, third level officials are okay so we need to be there visible with them if there are challenges you need to be there no they need to see you as a person who will be there for them whenever they need a person to to help them you are a source of inspiration and if you do that you are in a sense exercising your leadership skills okay so Instructional su supervision is a dynamic process. It's a systematic study and analysis of the entire teaching learning situation, uh, utilizing carefully planned program derived from the situation, adapted to the needs of those involved in it. So you need to listen carefully to your teachers. And I wanted to show this to you. No? Uh, the role of the school head is really more of an instructional supervisor. 70% should be spent no, in terms of instructional supervision and leadership. 
the administrative task that includes liquidation of the MOE, financial management, etc., should only be 30% of your um, of your time spent no, in this job. But honestly, the school heads are very over, overwhelmed no, with administrative tasks. What I did with this is I am very particular with strategic control. So um, remember that the person accountable is the person named in the check. So I don't want them to be checking on me no, when it comes to money. So what I do is I have a uh, treasurer that can work on it, a school treasurer who will handle the money. And then I train my, my teachers to do the liquidation. And I do all the checking. I am the internal audit. So I check on them whether it's properly done. If there is, uh, I always warn them that um, corruption is a no-no under my administration. No, I will never tolerate that. I will be the person who will be uh, putting you in jail if that's the case. Okay, so that's administrative part. The administrative part. So I focus more on the instructional part because seventy percent should be should be done by the school leader. The school head may be assisted by an assistant school head and shall be both an instructional leader, so both of them, and an administrative manager. The school head shall form a team with the school teachers, learning facilitators for delivery of quality educational programs, projects, and services. That's according to RA9155. So remember, every person under your supervision is different. They're all different. They're identical in most ways, but not in all ways. You have to study and analyze every individual under your supervision. And you can only do this if you talk to them. You know, try to work with them in a way that will be most productive. So you sit with them, you listen, you, you try to talk to them every now and then so that you'll be able to understand. Okay, so, so duties and responsibilities of instructional leaders. First of all, instructional leaders, you know, no, you have this um, duty and responsibility. Instructional support for teacher effectiveness and efficiency. So you assume leadership and supervise teachers on the improvement of instructional programs, specifically teaching learning process. Then you also motivate and support teachers to attain peak performance. You don't say, ah, okay, Rana, that's okay. No, you push them at higher levels, but not too much. Okay, uh, There is a sweet spot on that. They say, 10% with the comfort zone. No, at least 10% plus with the comfort zone. Please remember, you should be at the same time working when you're pushing people. Because people will say, oh my God, you're just you're just telling us everything what we need to do, but you're not actually working. No? So you have to be working with them. If you're pushing them, you have to push with them. And another thing is you should only push 10% above the comfort level. Okay, so that is uh, a good rule of thumb. No, do not push too much because you will be uh, causing a lot of conflict and it may cause an outbreak. No, assess, assist teachers in identifying strengths and growth areas through monitoring and evaluation. Then another area of support, instructional support for teachers, effectiveness and efficiency provides professional technical instructional assistance to teachers and school heads. So if they ask questions, how do they do this? Then you should be the go-to guy. Promotes DepEd programs and projects to improve teaching and learning, right? So you should have programs for them to improve succession, etc. Promotes the efficiency of teaching and learning in all classes through observation and visitation. So you should be there. No, the, the 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 teachers will usually say, "Sir, just don't come to my class." No, I have I've experienced this before. A teacher who is trembling because he is really she is really very afraid of me. I don't really know why. When I ask her, why are you afraid of me, ma'am? Uh, when I come to your class, I am not there to, to be very critical no? with you. I am there to, I am here to help you. But she keeps on telling me, sir, I'm really afraid because I know how intelligent you are, how good you are. And then I think she has heard from my previous uh, school assignments because I was assigned to, that was my second school assignment. It's already a very big school no? before I was assigned a supervisor. So during that time, she was really trembling and I told her and she told me that she had no sleep. No, She had no sleep before our COT. So I told her to calm down and I told her I will be visiting her again sometime next week because I wanted her to be very calm when she teaches. 
And uh, I always tell her that when, when I do this visitation, ma'am, this COT, I am here to help you. I'm not here to, to be, uh, you asked my teachers before, I'm not very critical. You know, what she heard was really all about my achievements, but not about how I, I teach my teachers. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. No, we need to be very sensitive and to be able to comfort them if they need. And sometimes, uh, if you choose, no, from being feared and being loved, then choose being feared. <laughs> okay, choose being feared. No, and you can only you can only do that by by really establishing your your reputation, but not too much. Too much fear will choke persons. Uh, will choke people no, from really performing high. They will only, that's a temporary uh, uh, solution to a particular problem in performance. So you wanted them to be comfortable with you, but not too much. No, There's a sweet spot. Not too much to the point that they, uh, the, the sense of respect no, and mystery is gone. <laughs> that is actually a strategy in leadership. No? You, should, you should be in the sweet spot. Uh, ako, I'm always very, if I sense that the person is fearful, then I try to make them comfortable. If I sense that they are very comfortable, then I tend to uh, create you know, a sense of gap. You know, that's a particular, that's a strategy you can employ. You know, so you should be studying that because you are leaders also. Teach, uh, teacher cap capability building. So you can organize seminars, workshops, no? conduct seminars and workshops. Never in you, you can be the resource speaker. And sometimes you can invite people no? to be the resource person. Then initiate action research designed to improve instruction. Conduct action research designed to improve instruction and academic performance. So action research is very important. Uh, uh, I'm actually teaching research. So if you really wanted to to really improve as a person, as a, a leader, action research can really help you. Okay, because data don't lie. No, and <laughs> your teachers cannot fool you easily because you are a researcher at the same time. Curricular enhancement so implements, monitor, supervise, and assess the school curriculum to assure higher learning outcomes. Evaluate learning outcomes vis-a-vis -vis the curriculum. Okay, recommend changes in policies affecting curriculum and instruction. Then, very important, we've discussed this, you try to localize and indigenize the curriculum. So that, again, what's the reason? Because we wanted it to become relevant, uh, something engaging for our learners. Okay, under curricular enhancement still, develop and promote innovative and effective teaching learning approaches. You know, I was already the principal, but I'm still doing the demonstration. I start it. You know? I, I show them how to play games, how to gamify their instruction, how to use a particular software in fact, the, the quiz is that we use here in our, our, in our review. This is uh, my, my contribution no, to our team no, in F&G no, because this is one of the things that I usually use. And we also have, um, there's, there are many no, platforms you can use. You can use Quizis. I'm also a subscriber of Quizis. Um, I, I really paid for the whole year because um, I, I'm using it for my, for my schooling, no? Then implements innovative and alternative delivery schemes in teaching and learning. Act as consultant for all publications. So you should be the one capable of doing this because you are in the instructional leader. And very important area, assessment and learning outcomes. So you undertake periodic evaluation of learners' achievement as basis for inset. So you look at the weaknesses of your learners. No? Assess ensures utilization of range of assessment processes of learners' performance. Right now, assessment is being hurt, I tell you. The integrity of assessment is being compromised now, especially in the pandemic. So what are the things you, need, you can do in order to standardize learning, and uh, especially in assessment? Leads in evaluation of learners' achievement and utilize results to improve learning. That's why we have MEA. No? We look at uh, this, but uh, honestly, no, in my own perspective, really deeper perspective, no, I don't think that we are really learning from our MEAs because sometimes our leaders will just say, or remove that uh, failures. You should work on those failures. No, as a result, our teachers are just are just passing all the learners, no, without even checking if these learners are really learning in the midst of the new normal. Okay, but for me, honestly, if I'll go one by one in all of the learners, I I'm sure that many of them are missing a lot of things. Uh, there's no way for us to validate. But DepEd, what DepEd is now doing is just 
measuring the end result, not the process. They should check if the teachers are really doing the remedial class. And the problem is the remedial class is being demonized. No? It's being demonized now, in a sense that if you do that, meaning you are not capable really of doing delivering the instruction because of teacher factor. So there, for me, no, it's, it's, there's, there's a need for us to recalibrate ourselves in how we monitor performance. We should not go entirely on the ratings because the ratings can be faked by the teachers because of fear of the, of the leaders, of the deaf ed leaders. Uh, we need to be looking at what is really happening because the effects of the pandemic might be hidden by all those passing grades. No, It's pandemic, but all our learners are passing. <laughs> so are they really learning or is it that the parents who are answering it? Or are the teachers, these are questions we need to ask. This, will, this is a ghost that will hunt us, no, I tell you. Five to ten years from now, this question will hunt us again. Uh, this is my prediction. Uh, we, will, we, will, we will see this ghost again five to ten years from now. We will see a very huge gap in terms of competency of the students now, if we continue doing what we are doing. So um, that's just my own no, perspective in terms of how we are dealing with uh, learners' performance. We need to ascertain if they are really learning in the midst of uh, the challenges that we have. Okay, so evaluates learning outcomes vis-a-vis the curriculum. No, <laughs> are, there's, are the standards really being achieved? Or are the passing grades really true? Or is just is just passed because they are afraid they might be called up by the division office. Develops, promotes innovative and effective assessment approaches. So if that is the thing, no, my dream really is for DepEd to become more realistic with how they do things. But you you might say, no, sir, you're already assistant schools division superintendent. You still don't have the power to do that. Well, honestly, I don't have the power to do that. No, much of this is still a bureaucracy here. It's the department of it's the central office, which is the policy making, uh, you know, area in the department. So this is just my opinion. So, and. Uh, it's it's in a researcher's perspective, you no, know, and analyzing the the things that are happening now. I'm sure, you no, know, the pandemic has really created a lot of gap in terms of competencies among our learners, because I myself could not lead read a very thick module, you no, know, let alone our parents and uh, the learners. So, hopefully, you no, know, I'm just hoping that some of them were able to really uh, follow it through, you no, know, religiously read the modules. Then that's a good thing. But how about those who fail to do it? Okay, Assess teachers in identifying strengths and growth areas through monitoring and observation. So according to Glickman of 1990, supervision is the guide that holds successful school together, a process by which some teachers or a group of people is responsible for providing a link between individual teacher needs and organizational goals to work in harmony toward their vision. Okay, So you are the guide, no? A process by which some person or group of people is providing a link between individual teacher needs and organizational goal, goals to work in harmony. You wanted the goal of the particular individual to be aligned with the goal of your company, no? of our department of education. Okay, So quality education depends partly on how well teachers are trained and supervised since they are the one of the key inputs to education delivery. So that's according to Lockhead and Verse 4, 1991 and Barrett et al. 2006. No? So why is it partly? Because there are a lot of factors too. No? We need to consider the factors that are outside our control. Many education experts rely strongly on school supervision system to monitor both the quality of schools and key measures of its success, such as student achievement. Okay, remember, the ability to learn is the most important quality of an instructional supervis supervisor can have. I cannot emphasize this enough. Huh? Okay, again, let me read that. No, the ability to learn. Why? Because some of us have stopped learning. No, has stopped learning. In fact, there are many, many, you know, many people who are occupying high positions that already stopped learning. I hope you are not one of that and I know you are not one of that because you are here. You wanted to learn. Okay? 
So that's a very good thing. You deserve a round of applause, no? For spending your time watching this. Okay, so, and listening to this lecture. So, you need to um, continue learning. No? The ability to learn. So, if you stop going to school, if you stop listening to trainings, webinars, seminars, no? Face-to-face -face seminars are coming, huh? No? We are already, there are many already limited face-to-face uh, seminars coming up. So please, no, um, involve yourself on this and try to to improve, continue improving yourself. Okay. So what do you think are these things here that we see? Okay. So these are standards. No, these are standards. So you look at these standards, and hopefully, uh, our teachers will be at par with the standards that we have here. Okay. What are these? What do you think is the meaning of these words? Okay, if you're going to describe. Okay, very good. Supervision or supervising the teacher is very good. Okay, so you're looking at how they do things, how they perform, okay, and you do this one-on-one -on -one talk, heart-to-heart -heart talk with your teachers. And you are one of them. No, You are one of them in terms of learning, providing them with leadership at the same time. So what the... What do you think is that word that would describe these pictures here? Okay, it's it's instruction. So this time you are giving inputs no, to your teachers. But remember, you cannot give inputs to someone if you haven't learned anything yet. <laughs> so in short, you need to do your readings. You need to be at least one step ahead of them, okay? In terms of the, the inputs, no? And that's why... Our sessions now, if you can, you listen to it again and again. No, if while you are, uh, I'll be uploading our uh, my session. No, um, minus um, minus our faces lang kay. I, I don't want you to to be to be uh, without your permission, ba to be included. But uh, my my lectures, I've already asked permission from Doc Landing that uh, we can have this uploaded in a YouTube channel. And uh, I am hoping no, that before the principal's test will occur, you can listen to this and you can learn. No, uh, Just keep on listening to, to, to lectures like this. No, Put it in your playlist. Listen to it over and over again while you're doing your work. And in, in a sense, you are improving. No, That's my strategy. That's my personal strategy before. Uh, after I do my reading, I listen to those people who can help me with other things and especially if it's very insightful uh, something that can help you with your work then why not instead of listening to music no at least before before the examination you forgo listening to music first uh, unless you are doing your relaxation no you just spend a little time you for your relaxation but instead of listening to music while you're doing things while you're in the CR or while you are uh, doing your house chores you listen to uh, materials like this. Okay, so instructional supervision standards. It is a standard-based comprehensive developmental set of processes to support the professional growth and development of teachers in professional learning communities. Its ultimate goal is improvement of instruction for enhanced learning outcomes. So that is instructional supervision. Now take note of this. We have a, a, a style called democratic supervision. So in this case, um, we have the, the following indicators no? for successful supervision. Uh, we recognize that the instructional supervision is a teacher support function to nurture teachers' leadership and autonomy. We want them to be independent. So that's why we have this democratic supervision. Promotes and facilitates activities for development of self-directed teachers as professionals and instructional learners. We utilize procedures that promote open communication. So we ask them, oh, what do you think are the ways for you to improve? Recognize teachers' strengths and needs and provide opportunities for growth in a supportive and learning environment. So we are like the, the, the cheerleader of our teachers. We also have collegiality and collaboration. So we need to, be, uh, we need to support collegial relationships among our teachers. We need to be a person who can deal with them, no? a friend, no? a friend, a leader, a mentor to them. We create and sustain a learning community that supports teachers as learners and leaders. We encourage teachers and other school personnel to collaborate in the improvement of instructional practices in the school. 
So you are like a facilitator. You also allow them to, you know, collaborate with each other. What do you think is the best approach? And then what do you think are the ways that we can improve? Right? So that's collegiality and collaboration. Promotes culture of cooperative work. That's why leadership is very important because you bring people together, right? And develop professional relationship among peers. Wherein they are open to you, they trust you, they respect you, and they see you as a person of integrity. You know, all of this will will evaporate once your teachers will detect that you have you have a you have a side which which has questions in terms of your integrity so no 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 i always tell that if you have if you have any symptoms or any signs of corruption where in teachers will think no that you are involved on those things you will be losing your integrity and your level of collegiality and collaboration so you should be the person no, uh, a person, a hallmark of integrity so that people will look at you, respect you with full integrity. Not just because they fear, no, they fear you, but because they respect you and look up at you because of your high level of integrity and high level of character. No, Professional development and teacher support. So this engages teacher in planning, designing, and evaluation of individual professional development programs. You need to support that. You should have a... Uh, a development program no, for them. He encouraged job-embedded professional development activities. No? N- um, improvement is not always in a form of seminar. No, We have job-embedded learning. We, t- we, we tend to increase their performance while they are working at the same time. Provides opportunities for dialogue among teachers and instructional leaders on curriculum teaching and learning. Okay, Then also at the same time, Provide differentiated professional development. <laughs> Take note of the word differentiated. It should be that we should be having that regular uh, heart-to-heart talk with your teachers. You know? Because each one of them are different. They may look the same. They may seem like they are all teachers, but they are different from their each other. How much do you know about your teachers' interests, uh, their needs, among others? So encourage teachers to engage in self-assessment. Now, honestly, no. Our teachers sometimes are are bombarded with a lot of financial difficulties. I tell you, if they have problems with their finances, they will consistently be upset because they need to do a lot of reloaning. <laughs> so, uh, try to help them on that part also. But you need to have that sense of trust because financial matters are confidential. No, oftentimes. So, um, just tell them that. If it's affecting your job already, they need to tell you about it, okay? Because that is already your concern. Encourages teachers to engage in self-assessment and personal relations. So, create a teacher which is self-reflective. No, they say that experience is the best teacher, but I tell you, the best teacher is not experience. Again, I repeat this again and again. It is reflection. So, if you continuously reflect with how you do things, you be you might be very young, but you are full of experience, okay? Uh, I pride myself on this. I am very reflective. In fact, um, I've a lot of times I've experienced no my subordinate telling me, sir, I think uh, maybe kanini siya. Uh, this is uh, there are um, it's the other way around. And I have always the humility to say, oh, I made a mistake. You're correct. Very good. Okay. So it's it's when we reflect and open to making mistakes, wherein we really grow as a person. Okay, and that makes us, it doesn't make us less of a leader if we admit that we committed a mistake. And also at the same time, you should be doing that to yourself. You should con- consistently reflect. Why do you think the teachers are are offended? What? Why do you think, what is the reason behind? So you need to be able to understand the social context of the, that person and to be able to be become reflective. No? And you also do that with your teachers. Encourage them that in our... In our system for professional development, we are open to feedback. And as I am open to your feedback, you should be open to feedback. Okay, I remember my teachers, I tell them to really evaluate me. And after that, I ask them to be evaluated by their learners too. No? For them to be to be to revisit no? and to be reflected with what their uh, current situation is. Okay? Then ethical teaching. So establish healthy supervisory relationship in self-assessment among teachers based on respect, trust in their personal and professional competence. Okay, so you need to have that healthy relationship. Okay, and encourage teachers to establish a good relationship with student peers and superiors. 
Okay, encourage teachers to translate curriculum into meaningful learning that fosters students' sense of identity, self-esteem, self-respect, and self-worth. No, you, they should be integrating this one with the curriculum. Uphold the practice of code of ethics for professional teachers. So encourage them to really do that because we are, uh, it's public trust, no? Then inquiry and reflective teaching. So reduce actions and accept feedback in an atmosphere of collegiality and collaboration. No, this is what I mentioned a while ago. Upholds responsibility and willingness to accept decisions on supervisory actions. Then inquires about effects, implications, actions, or decisions on others. Encourages teachers to inquire on good practices and to pursue better alternatives for improvement and teaching. So this is a form of continuous improvement. Okay? So diversity of teachers and learners. So to, uh, to do successful supervision, we need to encourage the development and use of differentiated forms of supervision. Okay? So we need to also consider that our teachers are different from each other. No? So we need to be very sensitive to what particular uh, input will be given. Okay? Provides opportunities for them to uh, for teachers and students to develop values of knowledge and skills in recognizing diversity among peers. Provides systematic assessment and constructive feedback to teachers about their personal and professional strength and needs. Okay? And of course, promote the use of comprehensive approaches and strategies resources to ensure the ethnic and cultural diversity. You need to consider the culture too. Then utilizes cultural, social, and experiential perspectives to address the diversity. And of course, assist teachers in deep consciousness and understanding of influences of cultural diversity and assist teachers to improve the quality of teaching and learning with respect to cultural diversity. Okay, now another very important skill is clinical supervision. No, so it requires understanding of the diversity of teachers. So you, you need to have the tailored fit, you no know, style of supervision. It requires comprehensive understanding of the use of pedagogy that accomplishes instructional goals. Now this time, this is for the teacher. How should they teach the learners, considering this is their situation? Encourage meaningful decisions of student learning progress and appropriate teaching strategies for the diverse learners. And of course, provides developmental instructional models which address the dimensions of teaching and learning and appropriately modifies feedback process. There's a sense of adjustment. Then assess, assist each teacher to strengthen professional identity. So you have to create your own style of teaching, but at the same time, very considerate to the context and situation of each learning. So this is done through careful analysis uh, and reflection of personal teaching performance. Okay, so this uh, another standard is formative teacher evaluation. So we employ differentiated procedures for teacher for formative evaluation. We encourage teachers and administrators to work as collaborative partners. So we're in this together. Recognize the formative evaluation of teacher addresses the individual teacher's professional development goals as well as the school improvement uh, goals. Okay, and then ensures that teacher formative evaluation is fair and complete in addressing both strengths and needs of the teacher. So you look at the strength, nurture that one, and the needs also you try to address that. Ensure that formative evaluation procedures are well-defined, articulated, and clearly communicated to the teachers and administrators to provide continuous instructional support to teachers' professionals and developmental activities. Clarifies aims of education. So this one is for curriculum supervision. Should be able to uh, explicate what are the standards of the curriculum. Encourages close collaboration of teachers. No, Foster continuous and open deliberation of the curriculum issues and problems by connecting theory and practice and making them understand why the curriculum is designed that way. Okay, Ensure equitable access to knowledge for all students regardless of race. Advances school curriculum that is socially and culturally relevant to teachers and learners. And for teachers' action research, we encourage the conduct of action research, promote reflection and self-assessment. We have mentioned this. Employs action research to enhance decision-making. Supports school-wide culture for school improvement. Encourages the utilization of the results of action research in solution of immediate educational problems. So make it a point to do something every day that you don't want to do. This is the golden rule for acquiring the habit of doing your duty without pain. No, that's a message from Mark Twain. Again, huh? let's try to analyze that. No, So every day, you try to do something that you don't want to do. 
<laughs> this is a golden rule for acquiring the habit of doing your duty without pain. Now, there are certain things. Now, uh, Mark Twain is actually referring to the ability to to be disciplined. No, the self discipline is very important. In fact, there were a lot of studies conducted, and they say that um, the primary no predictor of success is not about who is the most intelligent. No? It is who is most self-discipline. Okay? And self-discipline is doing things you don't want to do, doing the right things you don't want to do, but still you do it because it's the right thing to do. Okay? Just like reading. No? Ako, honestly, sometimes when you read, diba, it's tiring. No, attending this one, oh, much better. I can watch YouTube. Anything that you see there, it's very entertaining. But it's not something that is very much or something that will have an impact to your future. Okay? So studying for the principles test, it's not easy. But every day, you try to develop that sense of, um, sense of urgency. No? of doing things that even if you don't feel like doing it, you need to do it. Now, Brian Tracy puts it in a sense like you eat your frog. You need to eat your frog. The, eating the frog is something you don't really want to do, but you need to do it every day. No? And it takes a lot of self-discipline to do that. Okay, So every day, just do something. No, you Eat your frog early in the morning. Ako, I'm still studying up until now. I read very thick books. So... I still read about it. Every word that I encounter that I do not know, I try to unlock the meaning of that word. No, But what I do is I share it with somebody else so that I will be able to learn it more. Because I believe that the more you teach something, the better you will become with it. Okay? So those who like me, uh, raise your hand. This is the, <laughs> no? In the late Miriam Defensor Santiago. Now, those who like me, raise your hand. Those who do not like me, raise your standards. So this is a very good thing to to do, no? Um, um, we need to make ourselves very likable to the to the point that uh, we need to be a person of high integrity for us to state this one. No? So if you want to become a good leader, really start with your integrity. So what we do? What should I say? How will I do it? So these are questions you need to do. So you can do directive supervision no, that is intensive or informational. So beginning and exp inexperienced teachers, this is for them. No, uh, uh, Later on, I will explain this more, No, but I'll just run through with their definitions. As long as when you say directive supervision, you really determine everything. No, The standards, how should they act, you do everything as the supervisor. Collaborative, there's a sense of already, a sense of a collaboration between you and the teacher. No, so that's collaborative supervision wherein you advocate the supervisor be equal with the teacher and then you allow them to what do you think is the best way to improve no you allow them appropriate in starting to create a professional learning community non-directive means you allow them to direct themselves no it's a form of license fair management uh, the supervisor role is just to provide technical resources motivation then assist in the attainment of the plan and and it's non-directive, no self-directive, no most appropriate for advanced. You, you only apply this if you know that your teacher is already very advanced, huh? Okay. So the application of the three supervisory shifts, no, from one to other, must be according to the needs and context of the teacher. So you you don't say na, oh, sir, my style is really non-directive. I don't really give. You actually depend, no, on the capability of the teacher. So you look at the diversity, what are the different kinds. If you see that the teacher is in a very low uh, state and, and sometimes low low standards, no. so you have to think about how you should do it. Okay, so if you look at the PPST career stages, no, you will be treat uh, you will in the first stage, no, we expect that strong understanding of subject area. So this is the reason why we don't really uh, push for contents, no? And okay, for career stage one, you will see that we expect our teachers to be uh, capable no, of already 
in terms of knowledge and pedagogy. And they possess the requisite knowledge for skills and values that support the teaching learning process. Okay? For career uh, stage one still, no, they can manage learning programs and have strategies that promote learning based on learning needs of their students. Seek advice from experienced colleagues. For career stage two, then we can say that that is already a proficient teacher. So they are professionally independent in the application of skills vital to the teaching and learning process. They provide focused teaching and programs that meet curriculum and assessment requirements. So this is for stage two, display skills in planning. No, they already know how to do that. And then they can uh, do collaborative learning already. Okay, And they reflect practitioners who continue to consolidate knowledge, skills, and practices of career stage one teachers. Okay, And they consistently display a high level of performance in their teaching practice. So this one is for highly proficient. No, Stage three already. Manifest in-depth, sophisticated understanding, have high education focus, situation cognition, are more adept in problem solving, no? So these are the master teachers already. They can work collaboratively with colleagues. They they on themselves wanted to be professionally adept and they should have uh, they already have professional knowledge. Oh, distinguished teacher nani, the highest standard for teaching grounded in global best practices. They're exceptional, recognized as leaders in education, no? And they are already they are they created lifelong impacts already in the life of other people. So they are multi-awarded, consistently seek professional advancement, and exhibit commitment to inspire educational community and stakeholders. So that's career stage four. Okay. So therefore, based on what the stage they are, you can apply uh, the specific approach. So for beginning, you do directive. For proficient, you do collaborative. For highly proficient, you also do collaborative. For distinguished teachers, you do non-directive. So Usually, these are the behavior continuum. No, for non-directive, you do listening, clarifying, and encouraging. So these are only the things for the highest level. Nani, for those multi-awarded. For collaborative, you do presenting, interacting, counteracting because you wanted them to decide what are the approaches they can do to really improve. Directive is you model the way. No, you direct them. This is what you're going to do, right? So just to understand that one, we have here a table. No, approach is non-directive. Outcome, you have a teacher self plan. And max maximum teacher choice for those who are in the highest level. As you can see in the directive control in the lowest level, teachers are, oh no, they have no choice. You do the, the everything, you command them what to do because they are at lower level. No? And but for the proficient, no, and those in the in the middle part, you can do directive informational, you can direct them a little bit, and you can also do collaborative for in it's it's a mutual choice. Okay, so that is an example of phase developmental supervision. Uh, you can be diagnostic at first, no, and then tactical on the second stage, and third, strategic already. No? And you can employ specific supervisory techniques already. No? So for diagnostic, you observe and interact with the teacher. For tactical, you match supervisory approach no? to teacher level of instruction. You try to observe them and try to up, um, to to try to see what possible approach you can uh, use for strategic gradual exposure to new ideas. So you try to, um, there's incremental no uh, exposure to new ideas and how you do things so that you can increase the teacher's ability to absorb new information. Uh, just to, this is a instructional leader behavior continuum. So if you try to look at it in the key here, uh, from left to right, let's study it from left to right, huh? Here, from left to right, you see that teacher has maximum responsibility. Okay, so in this part, the teachers here are very proficient already. Okay, they're already very good. You no, know? that's why uh, you see that letter L here. You have minimum instructional leader responsibility. But here, in the in the right side, you see that the teacher is not really very, um, or not really very adept yet. they still lack a lot of competencies that they have to improve. And so, there's maximum instructional leader responsibility. So, you have a lot of accountability for that teacher. Of course, no, you wanted the teacher to improve so that they can transition from here to here. No, from right to left. No, going from here to this side. So, that is your goal. No, but at the same time, there, these are behaviors that you need to do. Like, you do some reinforcing, no, especially if the teacher is not yet very good. 
So you keep consistently reinforce them. You visit them almost all the time. Then if for you not to really visit them all the time, you try to standardize the process so that they can do it on their own without you reinforcing it all the time. That's where you, you provide guidelines in a form of memorandum. Then you direct them no, to follow it. Then you can do, uh, at higher level, you can do the negotiating wherein they can, they can uh, interact and to share all their insights about the policy. Then problem solving. Let them solve the problem. Then you can do some presenting, reflecting here for collaborative. In, but here in encouraging, clarifying, and listening, uh, these are for higher, no higher levels of teacher. As you can see, if you are non-directive, you should usually start with problem solving, presenting, reflecting, encouraging, clarifying. These are the things you can do. No, you can tell them to do some problem solving, uh, presenting, reflecting, and then uh, just encourage them. You try to clarify and then listen to them. But in collaborative, you, there's still a lot um, a sense of directing and negotiating. So uh, you. You, you provide them inputs. So that's why it's collaborative in a sense because you are still directing them, guiding them. No, There's still inputs in your part. No? But as you can see here, uh, teachers uh, has a responsibility here. No, This is the middle part. Then directive informational, there is still an, uh, standardizing, but there's less uh, reinforcing in your part. But in directive control, you have to consistently follow up. So... It will take much of your time. So you wanted your teachers to transition from here to here, no? And doing all this uh, behavior that you have here. I really love, no? Uh, this uh, this is adapted from Glickman of 1980, uh, Developmental Supervision. So you might as well as uh, save that. Take note of that, that you wanted your teachers to be self-adequate, no? That is our goal, no? Teachers will be self-adequate and... Uh, should be able to be independent. So, so this is uh, matching models with teacher stages like self-adequacy, the supervisory model is directive, modeling, the, and then predominant supervisory behaviors. You have directing and measuring. No? For developing, you can do some co co collaborative, no? then presenting, interacting, and contracting. For profession teachers, uh, you can do, do the non-directive, listening, clarifying, and encouraging. Okay, so as you can see here, the extent of self-direction uh, and uh, it's so as you can see here for supervisory styles, no, um, for directive control, you have a lot of responsibility. So extent of your supervisory direction or effort is very high. Then as you go through directive, informational, collaborative, and non-directive the lower your supervisory direction or effort is, okay? So your goal is to transition from left to right, huh? Okay, so the extent of teacher self-direction, meaning from left to right, the higher their level of self-direction, you don't need, uh, they don't need really your, your guidance a lot, then the better it becomes for you, okay? So you wanted all your teacher to transition to higher so that you won't be bombarded with a lot of reinforcing, no checking of your teachers every now and then. I always keep telling my teachers this one, na, you need to be a person of high values if you are in DepEd because uh, in DepEd, school heads are very overwhelmed. They're very busy. So you need to also at the same time make sure no, that you have a high value system. So cultivate it in your heart that you, you, will, you will be a person uh, not necessarily needing a lot of supervision. Because you you are you're a problem to the school if you are if we need uh, to consistently monitor with you every now you are already old enough no for God's sake no you're already a teacher you're already a professional why do you need to be consistently um, reinforced and to be followed up every now and then so school heads no no for each approach okay so. In instructional supervision directive, write a note to yourself and to tell how you will handle your teachers under each type of supervision. <laughs> so you try this activity, huh? Uh, so you can share that to your group if you like. Okay, so instructional leaders should match their assistance to teachers' conceptual levels. No, you try to see where level, uh, at what level are they currently. 
but with the ultimate goal of teachers taking charge of their improvement. That is your goal, no? So, um, again, let's end with this statement, no? I don't know if this is the end, but because uh, it's it's a very long slide. <laughs> but great leaders don't tell you what to do. They show you how it is done. Okay, so um, we want our people to be following our steps, no? Another statement here is that great leadership usually starts with a caring heart and a positive attitude and a, and a desire to make a difference. No, it's not the desire to be ahead of people. No, I keep telling you that. If you want to become a good leader, always remember that you are there to serve your people. You only wanted to become better because you wanted to be the person who will be there lifting them up. Because you cannot lift them up if you are down below them. <laughs> You can only push them at the bottom and it can even cause you to, to fall down from the cliff. Okay? So you need to be able to pull them up. No, At the same time, you need to be up there to be truly be capable of, of pushing them up. Welcome, lifelong learners. Welcome to my channel, Learning with Doc Labs, where we learn about research, education, technology, and the law. I am Doc Lebs. I am an educational leader, researcher, and law enthusiast. If you wish to grow as an educator, leader, researcher, and as a person, this channel is for you. Start your journey of lifelong learning by clicking subscribe or if you like exclusive videos of my trainings and webinars in the international and national arena, click join for more specialized content. Remember, learning is fun and making it lifelong is key to a fulfilling life. Start now by clicking subscribe or join.